What's good YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I need to start this video out with a little bit of background. Right now, the Democratic Party has a big problem. There are a couple of different camps that are pulling votes away from the Democrats in general. Blexit, that is one movement that is pulling black voters away from the Democratic Party for not addressing issues for so long. And then you have like the ADOS movement, American Descendants of Slavery, they are really pushing for reparations. T two minutes in, I wanna say, Andrew Yang does support reparations. Yeah, ADOS, Blexit, two different movements, both essentially pulling votes away from the Democratic Party. Um, the people who I believe who are interested in Joe Biden are older black people who just know the name, but no one's excited. Black people are just tired of uh, rhetoric. If there's no real substantial policy behind anything that anyone's saying, it's gonna tune it out. So Andrew Yang uniquely is in a position to do something that no other candidate can do. Because Andrew Yang does not have a black agenda. And that's the problem. He keeps getting asked his question and he is forced to answer it, but he needs to start saying, I don't have a black agenda because I'm a humanity first candidate. And humanity first is an entirely different way of thinking than, than our system currently has. He can't play identity politics or he loses the Trump voters and people just realize identity politics is so many rational pitfalls. Absolutely, which is why, again, I don't lead with things that are divisive. I try to keep it pretty basic. I think that Andrew Yang's humanity first is black Americans' best chance to solve many of the problems that are uniquely in the black community. So when Andrew Yang gets put in these situations where he has to answer questions to people about black issues, if he doesn't have specific African-American only policies, then it just seems like, oh, you're not really, you don't really have an agenda. You just, you're just giving us politician speak. Why he needs to lean more towards humanity first, because humanity first takes the idea that if you're not profitable, you're, you don't matter. To change our capital-centered capitalism to human-centered capitalism would so radically shift our politics, our business practices, everything that we do, that it is perhaps the next best thing to an official reparations policy. He supports that, he's not getting in the way of that, and and electing Andrew Yang as president doesn't interfere with that. Rather than staying at home, if you give your vote to somebody who is looking at fundamentally changing the system, you might ultimately be able to achieve your goal in the long run because once capitalism is no longer centered squarely on how much money you're gonna make us, some of the other factors that matter to your life will actually be important. So like I said, um, the Roland Martin interview, it, it was honestly just unimpressive, uninteresting. But the, the weird thing is that he actually has fantastic policies. They accomplish the goals that, uh, that, that are important to African Americans. He just doesn't put it together. So I want to play you guys this clip from Elizabeth Warren. Okay, this is at that forum. Okay, and listen to her answer. This answer is exactly what Andrew Yang is able to do, especially considering his policies are better than hers. The United States is one of only 13 countries in the world where the rate of maternal mortality is now worse than it was 25 years ago. Yes, ma'am. For black women, the risk of death from, pregn from pregnancy-related causes is three to four times higher than for white women, and black women are twice as likely to suffer from life-threatening pregnancy complications. What will you do to address this crisis this is true for well-educated African-American women, for wealthy African-American women. And the best studies that I've seen put it down to just one thing, prejudice. That, that doctors and nurses don't hear African-American women's medical issues the same way that they hear the same things from white women. And we gotta change that and we gotta change it fast because people's lives are at stake. So here's, I got a plan, okay. <laughs> and here's the plan. I know there are a lot of people and probably a lot of people in this audience who've been working on this issue. There are a lot of good ideas about how we could raise awareness of it and other kinds of things we could do to study it. But I got another approach that I want to use. I want to talk to the hospitals, who are, is where most of these births take place, and I want to talk to them in the language they understand. Money. Because mm -hmm. here's the deal. Yeah, because here's the deal. <laughs> 
Right now, the way that most medical procedures are treated, including uh, those of childbirth, is that hospitals and the doctors who work for them and the nurses who work for them, that hospitals get fee for services. So they get something for the delivery room and something for the recovery room and something for all the different parts, right? And they get it no matter what the outcomes are. So we have an innovation that's been going on now in medicine for a while called bundled payments. And the way it works is say you go to have your knee replaced. The hospital just gets a lump of money and then the measurement is, did the person get a knee that they can walk on that's pain free? Well, here's what I'd like to change right now in maternal health. And that is to say, the hospitals are just gonna get a lump of money. And if they bring down those maternal mortality rates, then they get a bonus. And if they don't, then they're gonna have money taken away from them. This is actually a pretty impressive response, but she just doesn't sound convincing. Andrea Yang can do that. Andrea Yang can do that better. You know, again, it goes back to this idea of human-centered capitalism. Change the incentives, you're able to enact policies like this. And on the way Andrea Yang describes everything that he has laid on his website, this is something that he, he would already suggest. He doesn't have a black agenda because he's doing this for everybody. And he just needs to say that. He doesn't want to be divisive, and that's fine. I, I totally get that. But he does need to say, as a result of certain things affecting your community disproportionately than others, you're gonna benefit at a disproportionate rate than others. I think that's perfectly fair game. I, think I just found an Andrew Yang quote that sounds exactly like this. You provide support for Flint, Michigan, and other communities affected by the water pollution. We are struggling with our own issues here in South Carolina and Denmark. So what is your solution to water quality in our state? So this is an emblem of how far we've sunk in as a country, where some of our kids are afraid to drink the water because the water is poison. Uh, and we have to do better than that. It's also a sign of our crumbling infrastructure, because a lot of this was from old water systems and pipes uh, that were manufactured uh, you know, literally decades and decades ago. So what I've said uh, to the folks in Flint, and, the, and I'm going to say to the folks in Denmark, is we're going to make it right. We're gonna fix it, it does not matter what it costs. This to me is a moral responsibility. And at the end of it, I'm going to have my children drink from the tap in Flint and Denmark so that everyone knows the water is safe because we have to do better for Americans. It's unconscionable that we can't even uh, have our kids drink from the tap in some of these neighborhoods. You know, and, and, and I've solved these problems in different lights. It's like everyone will be like, oh, it can't be done. It's like, oh, it can be done, it can be done. It's just right now we don't have the will to do it. So in a business context, when you have a problem like that, let's say the water pipes in Denmark uh, are, are deeply problematic, and people will look around and say, okay, it can't be done, it can't be done, and be like, you know what you're gonna do in the interim? You're gonna hand deliver massive jugs of water to everyone in that community for like the entire period every day. And they're gonna say, that's really <coughs> expensive. And I'll be like, that's right, it is really expensive and that's gonna make you fix the pipes faster because you have to spend the money on delivering like jugs of water to everyone every day. That's what you do in a business setting all the time. And anyone who's run a business knows this. Is you have a problem, you come up with the hack solution that is not sustainable, and then it forces you to actually solve the problem on a deeper level. So there, there, there are many things this country can do if we just have the will, but we're gonna get people clean drinking water, that's for damn sure. Yang is uniquely positioned to not have to pander because he is able to say, I don't have to have a black agenda. I have a people agenda. And currently, America has a capital agenda. So the reason why nothing that you ask for ever happens or everything that we promise you typically doesn't ever happen is because there's no capital behind it. So there's no motivation. We can't make businesses do something unless we change the incentives for business. Beyond the UBI, because they talk about UBI, obviously, he explains you know, what it is, how it's gonna benefit, how it would be done. What's your black agenda? Again, straight up, just ask him. Um, and he asked him regarding these specific areas. Education, um, capital for businesses, and criminal justice reform. The last debate, Yang was talking about charter schools. And when he was asked that question, he started talking about how you know, he's pro good school, yada, yada, yada. But then he hit on this really good point that since two thirds of the factors that go into determining how well a child performs in school have nothing to do with the teachers, we need to address the concerns of the family. I think Yang should pursue 
the family route um, more aggressively because he has, again, uniquely family-related policies. If he's talking about education and the external factors outside of school that impact a child's performance, you might want to throw in clean drinking water. You know what I mean? Like, I don't fault Yang for because the question wasn't asked directly, but he needs to push the issue. A great politician can spin this stuff all day long. And this is an example of him using his policies to answer a question, would be considered a, a black agenda type question. This is why when other candidates say they're gonna do something, you always wonder, are you really gonna do it? How are you able to do that? Once you start talking about the other factors, he talks about stressors in the home. What about paid leave? Now, Yang's offering for a paid family leave policy requiring employers to offer at least nine months of paid family leave distributed between parents, however they fee see fit, or six months of paid leave for a single parent. Wouldn't that help to ease some of the stress inside of a home in addition to the UBI? Like, I don't ever have to mention UBI and still explain to you why Ann Jang is a fantastic candidate. Probably a once in a generation type candidate. American Mall Act, okay? I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but he's looking to do something with all of these malls that are run down now that Amazon's taking all the shopping facilities down. He's gonna put $6 billion to fund struggling malls to attract businesses, schools, organizations, and entrepreneurs to find new uses for buildings and commercial spaces. You know, one of the things that has come up is that because we don't have community centers as much as we used to, schools end up absorbing all of these additional responsibilities. Well, if you got someone putting $6 billion into all these rundown malls, perhaps you're able to use get an organization to want to move into such a space and recreate that community center to bring that back into these specific communities. You know, one of the biggest problems that we have when it comes to these black agenda items, whatever, is America has done a really fantastic job of tricking people um, into believing that there was slavery and then nothing happened and then there's today. And that's not what happened. After slavery ended, America went on like a 95 year run of creating all of these different policies that made life extremely difficult for black people. How about no life insurance? How about you're not able to take advantage of the GI Bill? How about how about restrictive covenants? Like, are you kidding me? There's, there's just been so many egregious policies that the government supported and businesses used to become incredibly wealthy. Central issue that, that happens because of capital. Like, when you have everything being driven by, by capital, well, we made money, so I don't know what to tell you. It looks good on paper. We were able to get rich. We did what we were supposed to do, right? We didn't do the moral thing. We did the thing that was good for profit. So with Andrew Yang as president, we're gonna say, now it's time to do what's right for people. It is a significant difference to go from our current approach to, again, human-centered capitalism. He wants to restore voting rights to people who have lost theirs due to incarceration. Marriage counseling. Almost 70% of black children are born to unmarried parents. So marriage counseling might not be bad. Keep in mind, you got UBI running in the background of all these other things that Yang is doing. I didn't even talk about healthcare. Obviously, Yang supports Medicare for all. Changing the value of somebody from how much money they have in their pocket to um, everybody just being a person, which we don't have. The American scorecard is, is also like a huge part of this. So here are the factors that he has here on the American scorecard. We got childhood success rates. That might affect communities that have been disproportionately um, uh, affected by certain things. Um, underemployment, income inequality, consumer and student debt, work and civic engagement levels, volunteerism, infant mortality, quality of infrastructure, access to education, marriage divorce rates, marriage and divorce rates, uh, substance abuse and related deaths, national optimism, personal dynamism, economic mobility, quality of life and health adjusted life expectancy, happiness, well-being, mental health, environmental quality, affordability. If these are the measures of success of your country, I think a lot of people are gonna benefit. Regardless of whether or not he's saying it, his policies say otherwise. His policies are telling you, he's gonna give you exactly what you need. You're gonna prosper with Yang as a president. You're just gonna have to read between the lines a little bit. This American scorecard is a great way to start. Whenever he gets asked these questions, he needs to start talking about human-centered capitalism. He needs to go into the scorecard. He needs to talk about the way the system works currently and the outcomes that we would have if things changed. Even that first step of changing the American scorecard, that is gonna cause a ripple effect, different measurements that are ultimately gonna affect policy, that are ultimately gonna affect people's everyday lives. I, I see how everything that he is offering is interconnected. It makes sense that Changing that scorecard is really the heart of all of his policies. The UBI is the backbone, but the heart of it all is 
changing that scorecard to having a more human approach. We simply don't have that right now. In summary, man, Andrew Yang does not have a black agenda, but he does have policies that will disproportionately help out the black community, and he needs to focus on them. And by revolving it around changing the scorecard and human-centered capitalism, he will be able to make a connection with the audience he's not currently making. But yeah, thank you guys. Hit the like, subscribe, notifications, all of that. I'll see you guys soon.